This story is all about the building of affordable housing in San Diego, in the city of San Diego. And when I say the building, I mean the, the government-sponsored creation of affordable housing projects in the city. I discovered that every time the government gets involved with building affordable housing projects in the city of San Diego, the cost of doing those developments ends up wildly more expensive than it costs private developers to build similar, very nice high-end apartments in the city limits. The main factors are the requirement to pay prevailing wages, which can drive up a project's costs up to 25%. Now, prevailing wages are a government-mandated sort of minimum wage, uh, and they're tied to union wages. Now, because the construction the construction industry in San Diego is not very heavily weighted towards unions. That means that the construction costs tend to be a lot higher when you when you when you when you put in the requirement to pay minimum wages. So another factor is the the types of projects that are getting built and that, that are getting funding. You're looking at uh, projects that have all sorts of extra amenities uh, attached to them. Um, Developers will compete to add as many sort of flashy amenities as they can to a project in order to get funding, and that ends up driving costs up. And, and I think that the primary reason is that that nobody seems to worry much about how much these are going to cost because it's the, at the end of the day the bill is being footed by the taxpayer, the funding's coming from all sorts of disparate places, and there's no central body or person watching to take a look at it and say how much is this going to end up costing the taxpayer at the end of the day? What an investigative reporter's job is to is to go and investigate all the things that people think are outrageous or as many as possible and filter them down and figure out which ones really you know really should be of concern to the broader to the broader population and not to just certain interest groups or certain political ilks. I look for things that make me outraged or angry, first of all. Um, I look for, I get a lot of my ideas from people coming to me with things that anger or outrage them. Uh, obviously a lot of those may not pan out, may not turn out to be stories or to be things that are worth spending a couple of months on at a time. Uh, occasionally they do pan out and you, you find something that really does look odd, looks strange and looks like either a, a waste of money or something that where somebody needs to be held accountable and, and needs to be called out for uh, the process that's been put in place. I, I've seen policy changes, I've seen people put in jail, I've seen people fired, I've seen people step down, I've, I've seen uh, laws you know, changed or rewritten um, as a result of the work of investigative journalists. It's, uh, unquestionably it's a, it's a basic pillar of our democracy and our society and it's and, and investigative reporting especially is uh, drives policy change and drives societal change I'm sure of it. It's really the underpinning of what we do. I may be the only full-time investigative reporter on this staff but accountability journalism which is really just a, a, an offshoot or a part of an element of investigative reporting is something that we all do every day and uh, if, if, if we're not dealing with accountability issues and if we're not calling out problems and issues that we see um, on a regular basis, then we're told to buck up and start doing that because that's at, absolutely at the core of our mission. I want to be looking into the, you know, whether there is possible fraud, possible corruption going on, take a real close look at that and, and drill into them. And there's a couple of follow-up stories that, that I'm looking at doing uh, into some more nuanced aspects of the story than, than the simple fact that it costs a lot of money to do. My name is Will Carlos and I'm an investigative reporter for voiceofsandiego.org.